Welcome in the ninth episode. Today we will continue implementing the logic to place shape on the board and also we will fix the collision issue with our shapes. If you want to help support this channel, hit the subscribe button below this video, turn on notification so you will not miss any future episode I release. Okay, so let's get started. So first of all, let's actually fix the issue with this collision because it's very annoying and this needs to be fixed and it's very easy to fix. So let's stop the project. Let's open our project, go to the scenes and open the game scene. Okay, so now let's go to the prefabs folder and then let's go to the square image. Let's double click on this prefab. Select the square image and then let's scroll down to our box collider 2D and make sure our collider is triggered. So is triggered, make sure you have this check on. Once you've done that, make sure you just press the small arrow, then save. And now when you actually start your game, there should be no issue with, with the square. So as you see, I can move on the top of another shape and everything is fine. Okay, so everything work, works as before. So now let's uh, let's actually implement the logic to destroy our shape once the shape has been placed on the grid. So once we pre place the shape, the shape should be destroyed straight away. Okay, so let's go to our scripts folder and now let's open the shape and then let's open the shape square. So now in this class, let's add one more function. So below the start method, I will put public void and then deactivate shape. Deactivate shape. Okay. And inside this deactivate shape, I will just put the game object dot get component and we want to get the box collider 2D and then we want to disable it so I'm just going to call enable will be equal to false and then of course we want to make our shape our, our square invisible so I will just call the game object dot set active and I will set it to false Okay, and right below, let's put another function. So public void activate shape. And inside this function, let's put the game object dot get component. We want to get the box collider 2D dot enabled will be equal to true. And then of course, game object dot set active will be true. So we want to just reverse everything what we've done in the in the deactivate shape. And now let's go back to our shape class. And inside this class, we will have to add one more variable. So below the canvas, I will put private vector three, and I will call it start position. Okay. So we want to capture the start position of our shape where we actually spawn in the shape. So let's initialize the start position inside our awake function. So let's go to the awake and then below the shape draggable, I will just call the start position will be equal to transform dot local position. Okay, so we want to just capture our local position. So let's go to our request new shape function and before we create shape we want to call the transform dot local position will be equal to start position okay so every time we request new shape we want to make sure the new shape position is set to the same start position as the previous shape so now we will have to add two more functions so above this request new shape I will add public function, so public bool and let's call it is on start position so 
so this function will detect if our shape has been already moved or not. So this is very simple function, we just want to return the transform dot local position double equal sign start position. Okay? So if our transform local position will be equal to start position, this function will return true, otherwise we return false. And now we want to create one more function. So below this function, below is set on start position, I want to add public bool and I want to call this function is any of shape square active. Okay, inside this function we're going to loop through all of the squares for the specific shape. So for each we want to loop through the current shape. I want to call this object to be square. And we want to check if our square dot game object dot active self. So if this is true, we return true. And then otherwise, if we never hit this return true statement, we want to return false at the end outside of this for each. So return false. I made a typo inside the name square. Okay. So now we want to create one more function, actually two more functions. But before we do that, we want to add one more private variable. So let's scroll up below the start position. Let's put private bool and this is going to be the shape active will be equal to true. Okay, so we want to make we want to just have a boolean variable which indicate if the current shape is active or not. So this is going to be just for this purpose. So inside the awake method we want to initialize our shape active to be true. And then let's scroll down below is any of shape square active. We want to add one more function public void. And this is going to be the deactivate shape. Deactivate shape. Okay. So inside this function, we want to check if our shape active so if this shape is active we can deactivate it so for each current shape so we want to loop through all of the squares square we want to call square and then we want to put the question mark and dot okay so this is just the shortcut to check if the square is active we want to execute whatever is after the after the dot. So we want to get component, and we want to call uh, we want to get component of type shape square, and we want to call the deactivate shape. Okay, so maybe this function will be better named deactivate square, but you can rename it yourself if you. If you if you like and then of course outside of this F statement we want to call our shape active to be false okay so we want to do the same for our activate shape function so below this deactivate shape we want to create public void and then activate shape And we want to check if our shape is not active. So I will just put the exclamation mark be before the before our boolean variable. So if this variable is equal to false, we want to do the for each, and we want to loop through the current shape, and then square. And then we want to call the square question mark dot get component shape square 
dot activate shape. And then of course outside this F statement we want to call our shape active to be true. Okay, so that's it for this class. Let's save everything. And now let's go to our shape storage. And inside this class, we want to add one more function. So below the start method, we want to add public shape get current selected shape. So as you know, this class is holding the list of the shapes. So if you be spawning three shapes in our game, all of the shapes will be stored inside this list. So we want to get the current shape, which we just grabbed and then and then dragged from the start position. So this function will do just that. So in order to find the shape, let's loop through all of the shapes. So for each, and we want to loop through the shape list and I will call it shape and then we want to check if our shape dot is on start position equal to false make sure you put double equal sign and then end shape dot is any of shape square active we want to return shape Okay, and then otherwise, if we can't find any of the of the shape, we want to print the uh, print the log error message. So debug dot log error, and we want to print the message. There is no there is no shape selected or whatever you like. So this error message will be printed in red color in your console. And then we want to return null. Okay, so your code will crash straight away. So let's save everything. Okay, and let's actually make use of all of the functions we have implemented. So let's switch to our grid class. And then let's go right at the top of this class and above the columns. I want to add one more public variable, so public shape storage and let's call it shape storage. Okay, so this variable will be assigned from the editor and let's actually use this shape storage. So let's scroll right at the bottom to our check if shape can be placed function and then outside of this for each I will put the shape storage dot get current selected shape dot deactivate shape okay so once we place the shape on our grid we want to deactivate it straight away so now let's save everything let's go back to our unity so inside your game scene let's go to your canvas then grid and then we need to assign this shape storage. So we have our shape storage variable here. So let's grab this object and then drop it into the shape storage. So make sure this variable is assigned. Okay. So now let's go to the file and then save. And now let's actually press play. So let's try to place this shape on the grid. So once we place the shape, as you see the shape disappeared and you cannot place the same shape again so try to place another shape we can place it here and we can place it there and we don't have any more shapes so i think this implementation works fine now let's try again with different shapes here here and there that's fine so there is only there are actually a few problems so the first problem which we have is once you place the shape, you can place another shape on the top of this existing one. So as you see, this is not correct. It shouldn't be allowed. And then of course we wanna actually indicate this to the player. So once this, let's say this dot will be above any of the active shape, active square on our grid, we wanna change the color of this dot 
so the player will know that this dot cannot be placed in this position because it's already occupied. So this is uh, this is the next step with implementing all of this all of this placing behavior. But I think that's it for today. So in the next episode we're gonna concentrate on finishing this implementation. If you have any problems with implementation, please let me know in the comment below this video. Again, if you like this series, please consider subscribing to this channel and leave a like. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you again in the next episode.